Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's an honour to be here. Thank you very much to the IPA. And uh, what, what can I say? I mean, to be here and receive an award for production sound mixing and sound editing uh, in an evening where we're celebrating the incredible work of Walter Merch is just astounding for me. I'm just so proud to be standing up here. Well done. Thank you. Um, obviously, I've been following Walter's work since I very first started in the industry, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a really big, big honour for me to be here. Um, I'd also like to thank Tom Hooper, I'd like to thank Deborah Haywood, Eric Fellner and Cameron McIntosh for giving me the opportunity to record like this. Um, the, the job was unique in that uh, Tom wanted to record the actors singing live on the set. Now, many, many people said to him, Tom, look, that's just not possible. We don't do it like that. Now, in fact, um, they did do it like that in the 1930s. And what we've actually done here is we've come full circle and we've, uh, we've gone through doing it to mime and to playback and to ADRing it. And we've come all the way full circle back to the beginning where we actually recorded live on the set. But what was truly, truly unique about the process was the fact not only were the actors singing live, but they weren't singing to a set tempo. We didn't have any pre-recorded music to play back to them. We had a pianist who knew Lamez fantastically well, who was sitting in a, in a soundproof box off the set with three monitors watching the three cameras. And Tom Hooper said to the pianist, whatever you do, you don't lead the acting. You let the actors and the performance lead you, which was absolutely incredible because it meant that the actors could actually take a pause um, without worrying about getting behind the music and suddenly their voice is not being in sync. And it meant that they could bring an emotional truth to their performance that you probably wouldn't be able to get if you were singing to a pre-record and you certainly wouldn't be able to get if they were miming. Um, the other thing that was incredible about the project was because they were singing live, we could use close-ups. If you go back and look at mimed pre-recorded musicals, it's very, very difficult to run a close-up because you can see that the lip sync isn't quite right. Now, what was fantastic on Les Mis was Danny Cohen, our fantastic DP, had the ability to really, really get in close because the lip sync was true, honest and truthful. And I think that the connection that the audience have in the theatre with the emotion of the actors um, is, is really something quite special on Les Mis because of this. So I'd, I'd really like to... Um, commend Tom Hooper on such a huge, risky decision straight after uh, his success with the King's Speech. He could have gone and done an easy film. Okay, He chose something which would have been very, very easy to fail with. Lots of people told him it was impossible to do. And, uh, and he took it on, he made it his own, and he made it work. Um, and to be his production sound mixer was a huge, huge honour. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>